Hey, how's it going? It's Ethan with HustlePaintball.com and we're finally releasing our long-awaited Planet Eclipse E-Tech 3, both the LT and the AM review. This is something we're pretty stoked about. It's a fantastic gun in the price range. We're going to show you how it works, how to take it apart, how to lubricate it, and of course, how it shoots. So let's bring the camera in a little bit closer and let's take a look at these. Now to start off, the E-Tech 3 comes with a nice, hard-sided, padded, and zippered case. Pop it open. And what do you got? Full color owner's manual. This is extremely useful. You do not want to lose this. Some legit Eclipse gun oil. Once again, don't lose this. This will be useful. Eclipse barrel bag. Your front and back of your barrel. And the interesting thing is, the two pieces of the barrel are actually reverse threaded. That prevents these two pieces getting stuck together when you're cranking down your barrel, trying to put it on or remove it. It's a nice feature. The Eclipse tool tube has all the Allen wrenches you'll need to work on your gun. Nice thing about them, they have ball ends. So you don't have to be perfectly over the screw. You can have up to 30 degrees of angle. Makes it much easier and nicer to work on your paintball gun. A full spare parts bag, tons of O-rings and seals, all sorts of extra parts that you might need, and of course, the gun itself. The E-Tech 3 comes in five basic colors, regardless of if it's an AM or an LT. We've got the white and black, we've got the Forest Digi, we've got Urban Digi, Solid Black, and there's one more color that unfortunately I don't have with me here today, and that is the gray and black. It's a dark gunmetal gray and black highlights. Now the most common question we get in regards to the E-Tech 3 is what's the difference between the LT version and the AM version? It's really quite simple. The feed neck, eye covers, and the entire trigger frame minus the trigger. On the LT, it's a first for Planet Eclipse. They're made out of glass reinforced nylon. So it's gonna be a little bit less expensive to make but still very, very durable. On the AM version, all metal, trigger frame, eye covers, and feed neck are gonna be completely 100% all metal. Now, the other difference is on the AM version, even though the circuit board and all the internals of the two guns are identical, the frame on the AM allows you to install an optional aftermarket upgrade called the Eclipse Immortal Board. Simply replaces your existing back and circuit board and replaces it with an LCD screen with full functionality just like the high-end Egos. Now since those are the only differences between the AM and the LT, I'm going to do the rest of this demo using this very nice looking white and black AM. To start off, we've got the same on-off purge system, also known as the OOPS, that's featured on the Ego 10. Right now my markers are aired up. If I go ahead and back this off, it goes ahead and bleeds the line of pressure making it very easy to remove your tank. It does mount to the base of the trigger frame using Eclipse's T-Rail system. <clears throat> Moving up the macro line we come to the S3 inline regulator which is also taken from the Ego 10. This is a huge improvement over previous generations of regulators because it has a coil spring instead of the older shim or washer stack which was so easy to put together incorrectly. It also has a self purging device in it so once the tank is removed all the air will be gone from the regulator down. It features incredible recharge rates and very, very good consistency. The LPR is the same version used on the Ego SL8R, which is their super high-end version of the Ego from 2008. It's exceptionally stable and very, very simple. Now, if we follow the airflow up through the inline regulator and the LPR, there's now just a single hose that takes the low-pressure air to the new direct-mounted solenoid which is mounted directly next to your rammer housing. Now the cool thing about this rammer housing versus the E-Tech 2 is that it's much more compact, allowing your gun to be smaller and lighter. It does also have a zip kit in it, which became famous from the Ego SL74 and carried on through later generations of the Ego. Moving up to the cure bolt, simply pull the bolt pin up and slide the bolt out the back. As you can see, it has a ramped top, which makes it very gentle on paintballs in the feed stack. 
and it does have two O-rings near the face of the bolt. This maximizes the amount of pressure that goes down the barrel and minimizes the pressure that escapes back and goes up the feed tube or back past the bolt. This is a fantastic bolt and it's very, very gentle on paint. Moving up from the bolt, we have the DefTech Offset Feed Neck. Now, it's pretty much impossible to tell from any angle. However, it's a very clever invention they came up with that slightly offsets the feed neck from the top tube of the gun. What that does is when paintballs are loaded into the chamber, it minimizes the effect of any bounce or possibility of blowback. Of course, this feed neck also has a lever lock, so you don't need tools to put any hopper in there, and you know it's going to stay nice and firm. Moving forward to the two-piece barrel, as I mentioned earlier, while the barrel is autococker threaded, just like a you know normal high-end gun, the two pieces are reverse threaded, and this makes it very easy to remove the two pieces, and you don't have to worry about them getting bound when you're tightening the barrel into the paintball gun. This two-piece barrel does have a 693 back, so you will definitely be able to use any paint with this barrel system. Now behind the eye covers is the BBSS, or brake beam sensor system. What it is is a brake beam eye that detects if there's a paintball in the chamber or not, and will only fire if a paintball is loaded. This eliminates any possibility of chopping the paintball. Now, the cool thing about it is if the system detects any sort of fault or error, what it'll do is it'll actually override the BBSS and turn off the eyes, but it will still continue to fire at a very reduced rate of fire. So if, you're, uh, if your chamber does get dirty, you can still shoot, However, you're not going to be able to do high rates of fire. Best thing to do in that case, take your bolt out, run a swab through it, get your gun cleaned, and then you'll be functioning at full performance once more. Let's move down to the trigger. Now this trigger rides in a self-lubricating holder that clips into the trigger frame. It's very, very smooth. It does have a magnetic return, not a spring, and the magnet strength, the front and the backstop are all fully adjustable. So you can tune this trigger exactly how you want. Like I said, the side style trigger is extremely comfortable and most people find that they can shoot very high rates of fire with it. The general maintenance of your ETEC 3 is pretty simple. Go ahead and remove the bolt, remove the rammer cap, and you may need an Allen to coax out the rammer but it comes out pretty easily. You don't have to do this after every time you play, but I would recommend it. Completely clean, wipe this down, both the bolt and the rammer, and use oil on all the O-rings. Simple as that. Go ahead and put the rammer back in. Replace the cap. Tighten it, but don't crank it down too tight. Line up your bolt and you're good to go. That's all you need to do for basic maintenance, other than maybe removing the eye covers and cleaning out it, any paint that gets in there. Now periodically, most of us guys do it about every five or six months, and we play pretty often, so it really doesn't have to be done that often, but the high pressure rig and the low pressure rig, you wanna maintain them so that they'll be functioning well. Completely take these apart, wipe down all the internals, and go ahead and grease them. Do not use oil. So any sort of a lubricant or grease, kind of a paste style uh, lube, is what you want to use for both your high pressure rig and your low pressure rig. That about covers the maintenance for the ETEC 3 top to bottom. It's really that simple. Now we're almost back to the LED board, but before we do that, I really want to talk about these grips. A lot of mid to high end guns come with actually pretty cheap and garbage grips. These are very, very comfortable, very grippy, very, very nice. Good job at clips. There are three grip screws on either side, and I want to give you a small caution. This front grip screw on either side, you don't want to tighten it down too much. Some people actually tend to uh, remove this just to reduce the, the possibility that this gets over tightened, because if it does get extremely over tightened, it will actually uh, damage the solenoid, causing leaks or expensive repairs. So it's not like it happens that often, but don't crank down this screw, that's all I'm going to say. Hit the power button, your board lights up, now we're ready to take a look at all its features. Now in this video, I'm going to do a very brief walkthrough on how to navigate through your board. Hold the power button for just a moment, and the gun will turn on. It does flash green. I pull the trigger, but since I don't have any paint in the marker, it won't fire. To turn off your eyes, hold down the power button for just a moment. Changes color, and you're good to go. Hold down the power button again. 
eyes are back on. Now, one of the first things that most people like to do with their brand new ETEC 3 is remove the tournament lock. Let's go ahead and open up the grips, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, go ahead and remove the right side of the grip, and as you'll see, there is a uh, color code map, which is very useful out on the field when you don't have your manual with you. But, focusing on the tournament lock, it's a small button right here. You want to make sure your gun is on, you want to push it, and look at the colors at the back of the grip frame. When it flashes red, that indicates that the tournament lock has been turned off. You'll be able to make some advanced edits. Let's go ahead and close this grip back up, and I'll show you some more things. Now that we've got the tournament lock disabled, I want to walk you through some of the basic functions of your board. To enter setup mode, pull the trigger and hold the power button. You'll see it flash blue and white quickly. And now, when I press the power button, the LEDs change colors. Each color signifies a different mode. I'm going to go to green, which is setting the maximum rate of fire when the BBSS, the brake beam sensor system, is on, i.e. when you're shooting paint. What I want to do right now is pull the trigger once, you'll see the top LED flash once, and the middle and the bottom won't flash at all. Now, think of it like this. This is one digit, this is the next digit, and this is an actual decimal. So, one zero zero is one point, or one zero point zero, or ten. So what it's saying is that the maximum rate of fire currently set is 10 balls per second. I want to change that to the maximum for the ETEC 3, which is 15.4. Now in order to do that, you want to hold the trigger briefly, and the top LED will light up. In order to set what you want, pull the trigger the desired number of times, and then press the power button to move on. I'm going to be setting, setting it to 15.4. That's 1, 5, 4. So 1, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Press the power button again, and it flashed green, indicating that I entered a correct setting. I didn't enter something crazy like 30. If I would have tried that, it would have flashed red. Now I want to press the power button to move on to the blue mode. This is the maximum rate of fire when the uh, eyes are off, so I can do some demoing for you. Pull the trigger, and you can see that it's also set at 10 balls a second. So let's go ahead and change that. Okay? One, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Saved it. Let's go ahead and get back into normal mode. Now that we've got those modes set, a little bit of demo time. Turned off the eyes. That's somewhat close ish to 15 balls a second. I'm not sure I hit it, but definitely faster than the stock 10 balls a second. What you guys really want to see is how fast this shoots, how well it shoots with paint. So let's go ahead and throw a rotor on there, load it up with some paint, and head outside. All right, guys, we're out here with our E-Tech 3 AM. We've got a Gorilla 6845 die rotor and some fantastic fluorescent orange paint. JT Spectre Proflex. Let's go ahead and do some accuracy and rate of fire tests. Fantastic! Alright, let's make some shapes. Let's see. One shot, baby. This thing's no joke. So we've gone through all the features. You know the difference between the LT and the AM. We've taken it apart. You know how to maintain and lubricate it. We've taken it outside. We've shot it. You know how to program the board. You basically know everything you need to except which color you want to pick. So if you have any other questions about the E-Tech 3s or any of the Planet Eclipse guns, just email us at videos at hustlepaintball.com. Remember, you can find all this great gear at our website, hustlepaintball.com. So be sure to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, read our blog, and of course subscribe to YouTube because we've got a ton more videos coming out. Really enjoy doing these. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys soon.